San Francisco, the city shaped by the sea. Millions admire the breathtaking bay views. Yet we are more familiar with the buildings and bridges, our landmarks and icons, than the ocean life beneath the surface. Dive into the underwater world of the San Francisco Bay and discover the city of the shark. Great white sharks used to live in the bay, but really the top predator in the bay is the seven gill shark. There are five species of sharks that live in the San Francisco Bay. Of course, seven gill sharks, leopard sharks, brown sharks, spiny dogfish, and soupfin sharks. There is so little known about sharks in general, and seven gills in particular, even basic things like how long they live, how often do they reproduce, the number of young in each litter. There's so much information we still really need to find out. In a new shark research and conservation program, the Aquarium of the Bay's team of collectors and scientists is locating and landing San Francisco Bay sharks, including the extraordinary seven-gill shark. The Aquarium of the Bay Foundation is supporting a long-term seven-gill research program. We track their patterns, follow their movements, and hopefully we'll be able to gain a greater understanding of how they utilize their habitat, where they're going, and what they're doing. We're collaborating with the Biotelemetry Lab at University of California, Davis, in our seven gill shark studies. This, this species is found all over the world, um, near coasts and bays. And, uh, but what we, what we don't know is if each bay, each coastal region has its own local population and how much mixing there is between perhaps San Francisco Bay population, Puget Sound population, Humboldt, we just mixing with the worldwide population. These are things that would help you manage the species better. Send this off to Seattle. Genetic analysis of the DNA taken from small fin clippings will determine the relationships among local sharks and other populations. So the movement patterns and the DNA will give us an idea of that as well. These are things that would help you manage the species better, and perhaps the other sharks as well that use the bay. To better understand the seven gill and other species, over a hundred local sharks have been caught and released in the tracking project. A few sharks are transported back to the aquarium to study and for the public to experience and appreciate. When we collect sharks for educational purposes, we send out a special team. We carefully bring them back to the aquarium. We let them acclimate. We give them a quick physical and then we place them on exhibit. To ensure that the water is optimal for the animal's health and welfare, fresh seawater, pumped directly from the San Francisco Bay, is filtered and monitored. What we do is we'll look in the refractometer. This gives us a reading of 34 parts per thousand, which we can take. It's really difficult to see a shark in the wild, particularly in San Francisco, because the water is so uh, cloudy and silty. So the experience that visitors have here of seeing San Francisco sharks up close is really a unique opportunity. Well, sharks in general are really fascinating and seven gills are particularly interesting. Not only do they have seven gills, which is very unusual, most sharks only have five, but they're really superbly adapted to their lifestyle. They have remarkable senses. They have vision and hearing and taste and touch, but they also have the ability to sense weak electromagnetic fields in the water, which helps them find prey and perhaps navigate using the Earth's own magnetic fields. They're superbly adapted to their lifestyle. Our staff is specially trained to take care of sharks. We monitor their health very closely. They have veterinary care. We feed them a specialized diet. 
We monitor how much they eat and how much they weigh and their growth. And of course, we feed them sustainable restaurant quality food. We house a variety of really interesting San Francisco Bay animals. We have giant Pacific octopus, we have all kinds of species of crabs, we have ocean whitefish. It's a nice collection that's designed to help people appreciate the incredible diversity of the San Francisco Bay. Since the aquarium is right on the bay, our educational focus is the animals that live in and around the bay, as well as helping our guests understand the importance of this giant estuary, which is a really complicated living ecosystem. Just use one finger between the dorsal fins, right on his back. So you can go ahead and touch him. Good I job. touched the fin! Here I touched the So through education and through our research programs, we hope to contribute to the knowledge about these animals and help people understand how wonderful the San Francisco Bay really is. The shark team is taking their experience onto the bay to learn more about seven gill sharks. Tagging and tracking seven gills can provide valuable information about these little known sharks and could help protect the population from local threats. They're subcutaneous, so this um, part here gets inserted into the muscle and basically this part sticks out. Okay. Great. It has our address and our phone number on it, and we encourage fishermen, of course, to release the sharks, but if they don't, to at least contact us with the information about where they were captured and under what conditions. And that, of course, will contribute another piece of data to our collection. In addition to the recoverable tags, the scientists are implanting seven gills with special acoustic tags. Like many species of shark, the seven gill experiences a trance-like state when turned over, called temporal isotonia, or TI. Okay. Okay, this calm state is safe for the shark and makes it possible for the scientists to implant the transmitters. All right, baby, you ready? This is a V13 acoustic transmitter, and it will send out a coded signal. Okay. Basically, for the rest of its battery life, we'll send out this signal every 15 to 90 seconds. And if it's within range of a monitor, within about 400 meters of a, of a monitor, that monitor will pick up that signal. Following the procedure, the seven gills are observed and measured before releasing them back into the bay. Once released, the unharmed shark's movements can be tracked immediately. This tag gives us really valuable information about where the shark is swimming, at what depth, in what seawater conditions, and allows us to track the animal in real time so we have a good idea of how these sharks make a living. Are they sitting on the bottom? Are they coming and going? And these tags will help us find all that information.
Sharks are extremely vulnerable to overfishing. It can take decades for a population to rebound, and if pressure continues, some populations may not recover. Any kind of harvesting on sharks is going to have an impact because, uh, first of all, you're talking about an animal, um, they're typically long-lived, they are late maturing, um, and they are slow growing. So even if you were to get like a three foot, four foot shark, that shark may not have even, depending on the species, had a chance to reproduce yet. So if you're harvesting animals that haven't had a chance to reproduce, the simple math is telling you that that population is going to be reduced. Globally, sharks are really in trouble. It's a bad time to be a shark, and they face a lot of problems. First and foremost is commercial fishing. They just don't have a high enough reproductive rate to keep up with the demand. Secondly, our interest in shark products like shark fin soup or shark cartilage and other uses, oil, skin, is helping to decimate the numbers. And that's not even counting the whole water quality issue of toxins and pollution entering the ocean. But some of the main threats in the San Francisco Bay would include toxic runoff, other pollutions that have settled in the sediment, dredging and reusing what was their native habitat and might be their most important birthing grounds for other purposes. As the top predator in the San Francisco Bay, seven gill sharks are fundamental for maintaining a balanced and productive bay ecosystem. There are lots of reasons to care about sharks, but just to generalize, I'd say there's two main ones. First, sharks are really an important piece in the puzzle that is the food web. And if we take one of those pieces out of this incredibly complicated puzzle, it could have really disastrous effects and consequences that we don't even perceive now. In addition to the complexity of the food web, there's also a diversity that sharks provide, as do all animals, that helps make our world diverse and beautiful, and if we eliminate a top apex predator like sharks, it diminishes our environment and the environment for every generation that follows. The San Francisco Bay is an interconnected community of people, plants, and animals. As part of this community, sharks play a vital role in a healthy bay. We hope we're inspiring the public to help save sharks and other animals indigenous to the San Francisco Bay by doing things like only eating sustainable seafood, avoiding products that come from live sharks, supporting the conservation group of their choice, be it the Aquarium of the Bay Foundation or another group, and just being educated about the issues that are constantly facing the San Francisco Bay and all wildlife on the planet. There is hope for sharks. Our actions, both on the bay and ashore, can protect sharks and all the marine life of the San Francisco Bay and beyond. Grace, coming in and crashing like a wave, washing in only to slip away. And all I've ever really known is change But if Well I could take this moment and make it rich It doesn't matter where or who I'm with As long as I'm not feeling myself itch And it wears me But it makes me stronger When I hit the ground I gotta believe